I used to do a series on this channel where I read around the world and I still have my regions draw which was how I did that. I would pick out a region, pick five books from that area and read them um, and whilst I'm, I'm not sure whether I want to continue doing it this way. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But there are definitely some countries that I wish to try and read from, um, hopefully this year. The first one of those is Palestine, with the ongoing genocide in Palestine at the moment. Obviously, lots of people are reading Palestinian authors. I have read some non-fiction from the area, but I definitely want to read more fiction as well. Um, I find it a very good way for me myself to um, understand things, even though obviously it is not as uh, comprehensive as reading non-fiction, I do find that that fiction tends to stay with me more. One that I've seen a lot of people reading this year is Minor Detail by Adania Shibli, which was translated from the Arabic by Elizabeth Jaquet. This is one that I heard about a few years ago, but because I know that it is a very brutal book, it is one that I put off. But I have since read books that have deal with similar difficult topics, and I think that I am less squeamish than I thought I was. This one covers, it begins with the experience of a Palestinian woman who is brutally raped by an IDF soldier, and that is in 1949. And then later on, a woman becomes obsessed with this case and with why nothing was done about it, obsessed with this minor detail of history. It's one that so many people have said is really great and really moving, um, and so I definitely want to give it a go, and I think that I am now capable of reading something, because I've heard that it is quite graphic in terms of that initial gang rape situation. Um, so of course if that is something that you would struggle with, I wouldn't recommend it for you. Uh, although it will be a difficult read, I think it will be manageable for me. Another one that I've seen around a lot is You Exist Too Much by Zainat Arafat. Um, this was first published in 2020, and so I think that was when I saw a lot of people reading it. This one is about a Palestinian American girl who is one day outside the Church of Nativity and she has exposed her legs in a biblical area and a group of men yell at her for it. As she grows up, she realises that she is queer and she admits this to her mother who tells her, you exist too much. So it is told in flashbacks between the US and um, Jordan and Lebanon and Palestine and is a coming of age novel about this young queer girl, Palestinian American girl becoming a DJ and um, an aspiring writer. I do enjoy a coming of age novel and I like that this is a slightly different perspective, um, a, a queer look. It is obviously Palestinian American, more focused than just um, in Palestine, but I think definitely worth a read. And then finally from Palestine, Wild Thorns by Sahar Khalifa is one that I've seen a lot of people reading in since the recent increase in violence in Gaza. This is a modern classic from 1976. It was translated from the Arabic by uh, Trevor Legasic and Elizabeth Warnock Fenea, and is, I think, historical fiction. A young Palestinian named um, Usama returns from walking in the Gulf to support the resistance movement. His mission is to blow up buses taking Palestinian workers to Israel. And he is, he, when he returns, he is shocked to discover the way that his fellow Palestinians have reacted and adjusted to living under occupation. And so this is about terrorism and violence um, and what the reasons behind and the ways that those things become what people uh, choose to do. Um, and so I am, yeah, I've heard really great things. I've heard that it is really brilliantly written as well. Um, the cover that I have seen does look a bit like a YA fantasy, which is a bit which is obviously very clearly not what it is, but I have heard really good things about it. Another country that is currently in the news because of the violence that is going on there, um, it has been called a genocide by some people and is also in relation to um, mining and things is um, Congo. I, I will leave links to information in the description below if you would like to know more about what's going on in Congo at the moment, um, but it, it is another area that I want to read some books by. I have read The Death of Comrade President by Alain Mambanko, who is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And this was um, historical fiction set in the 70s after the murder of the president of Congo. Another book by him that I have seen around is Black Moses, which was translated from the French by Helen Stevenson. And this has been described as Oliver Twist in 1970s Africa. Um, so it is set in a similar time period to the death of Conroe president. It is about a young boy who is known as Moses who lives in an orphanage run by a political stooge where he is terrorised by fellow orphans. Um, and eventually they end up escaping the orphanage and moving to the town where they form a gang that survives on petty death. And it says that it chronicles Moses's ultimately tragic journey through the Point Noir underworld and the politically repressive world of Congo Brazzaville in the 70s and 80s. So this is historical rather than a contemporary novel about what is going on in Congo now, but obviously um, context is always important and I've heard such great things about it, um, about the like humour and life that he brings as well as the darkness. Um, and having read Alain Mambo Co before, I know that I enjoy um, 
at least I say I enjoy his writing um, but obviously that's hard to tell from a translation I don't know if this is the same translator um, but I did enjoy that previous book of his that I read one that is by a Congolese writer in the UK is No Place Called Home or No Place to Call Home by JJ Bowler um, and this is another one that I have seen around um, and that's why I want to read it. It is about a boy whose parents fled from the Congo um, and mo moved to the UK to escape the political violence under the dictator uh, Le, Le Maréchal and the young and it's kind of a coming of age story about the young son Jean who is struggling to fit in at his new school. An unlikely friendship gets him into a string of sticky situations eventually leading to a suspension. At home his parents pressure him to focus on school and get his act together to behave more like his star student little sister. It is about them trying to navigate life in the UK and the different um, trying the difference between like assimilation whilst trying to hold on to your original culture. And I've heard great things about JJ Bowler's writing as well. Also Sudan is a country currently undergoing civil war and um, again I will leave a lot of information in the comments down below. Uh, there is talk again of genocide going on in Sudan and there is a book that I am currently reading. I'm currently reading Seasons of Migration to the North by Tayyip Saleh um, who is a like, very famous Sudanese author um, but there are other books from Sudan on my TBR as well. One of those is Ghost Season by Fatina Bas, which was first published last year and I think I heard some people talking about that one and this is a about five characters on the border between Sudan and South Sudan, um, which obviously was what the, the result of the last civil war in Sudan. Um, and it is about five strangers who are living on an NGO compound. A burnt, mysterious, a mysterious burnt corpse appears one morning in Saraya, a remote border town between northern and southern Sudan. Southern Sudanese translator William connects the corpse to the sudden disappearance of Cook Leila, a northern nomad with whom he's fallen in love. Meanwhile, Sudanese-American filmmaker Dena struggles to connect to her unfamiliar homeland, and white Midwestern aid worker Alex finds his plans thwarted by a change in climate and looming a civil war. Um, so it is a very much a character-focused book, and a book about the experiences of people caught up in greater political situations. Leila Abu Leila is a writer that I've heard really great things about. She is a Sudanese writer, and her book River Spirit, uh, which again was published last year, is another one that I want to read. This one is historical fiction set in 1880s Sudan um, and is about the attempts to control Sudan um, and the fights between the uh, Turkish Egyptian people who were running it and uh, French and British colonialists. When Akuani and her brother are orphaned in a village raid, they are taken in by Yassin, a young merchant. Yassin's vow to care for them will teach him, will tether him to Akuani throughout their lives. As revolution begins to brew, led by the self-proclaimed Mahdi, Sudan begins to prize itself from Ottoman rule and everyone must choose a side. So it is, again, people caught up in greater political movements and machinations um, and the experience of the individual in that. Uh, a book by a Yemeni author. Now, this is non-fiction, the first non-fiction on here. Um, I think Yemeni literature is not hugely well like pop, uh, translated or well known. Um, I couldn't find much previously when I've been looking for Yemeni literature. What You Have Left Behind by Bushra al-Maktari, which was translated by Sawad Hussein, is uh, one is the her experience of fleeing from Yemen. She decided to document the suffering of civilians in the Yemeni civil war, which has killed over 200,000 people, according to the UN. Inspired by the work of Svetlana Alekseyevich, she spent two years visiting different parts of the country, putting her life at risk by speaking with compatriots and gathered over 400 testimonies, in a selection of which appear in What You Have Left Behind. So it is an oral history. Um, and like I've not I don't actually know that much about the civil war in Yemen, so I think this would be a good way to learn. There are also two Ukrainian books that I have been interested in reading, the first of which is a fieldwork in Ukrainian sex, which um, Matthew Sharapa, uh, insert literary pun here, and, and Claire Reads Books, they did a live show um, reading this book last year, and the way they described it, I think it was last year, maybe it was the, no, maybe it was 2022, um, but the way that they described it made me really, really want to read it. It was definitely in the vein of a lot of like, um, unhinged women, dis uh, depressed women moving, like that kind of the vibe, very modern uh, women-centric lit, lit fiction. Um, and it is by Oksana Zabushko and is translated by ha Halia Harin. Um, and it is only a really short book as well. And it was published in 1996, but the way they described it, it sounded like it is a very, very modern book. About a woman visiting a professor of Slavic studies at Harvard and her exposure to American values and behaviors conspires with her yearning to break free from con Ukrainian conventions. In her despair over a recently ended affair, she turns her attention to the details of her lover's abusive behavior. 
in detailing the power her Ukrainian lover wielded over her and in admitting the underlying reasons for her attraction to him, she begins to see the chains that have defined her as a Ukrainian woman and in doing so exposes the calls into question her country's culture of fear and repression. The other one that I have seen, like my mum had and was on her shelves for a long time and very much intrigued me was um, a History of Tractors in Ukraine or Short History of Tractors in Ukraine which is by Marina Levika um, and this is again another one that was best-selling and I think best-selling outside of Ukraine as well. And it is supposed to be quite a funny book about two sisters who join forces against their father's new gold digging girlfriend. Setting aside their lifelong fe lifetime of feuding to save their emigre engineer father from a voluptuous gold digger Valentina. With her proclivity for green satin underwear and boil in the bag cuisine, she will not stop at nothing in, in her pursuit of western wealth. But the sisters campaign to oust Valentina and her family secrets and covers 50 years of Europe's darkest history and sends them back to roots they'd much rather forget. And this was first published in 2005, so it's been a while. But again, like I said, I was always intrigued by this because a uh, short history of tractors in Ukraine. Such an interesting title for a book. Another historical fiction is The Storm by Arif Anwar, which is set in Bangladesh. Um, again, this is a country I don't think I've ever read literature from um, and so I would like to read this one and it's one that I heard about when I worked in the library um, a lot of I think one of the book groups were reading it and they were all really really enjoyed it it's about Sharia a recent PhD graduate and a father of nine-year-old Anna who must leave the US when his visa expires in their last remaining weeks together we learn Sharia's history in a village on the Bay of Bengal where a poor fisherman and his wife are preparing to face a storm of historic proportions the story intersects with those of a Japanese pilot, a British doctor stationed in Burma during World War II, and a privileged couple who leaves everything behind to move to East Pakistan following the partition of India, inspired by the 1970 Bola cyclone in which half a million people perished overnight. And I, I like I've said, I've heard great things about this book. Um, I've heard that it is in a really interesting like style and construction. The form of this novel is really interesting, um, and that's one of the reasons I want to read. Another one that I heard about when it first came out and then never got round to reading is It Would Be Night in Caracas by Karina Sainz Borgo, which was translated by Elizabeth Bear. And this one, Caracas, it's set in Venezuela. And it was one that got, I think, pretty good reviews when it first came out. Uh, and I don't think I've ever read any Venezuelan literature either. In Caracas, Venezuela, Adela Adelaida Falk stands over an open grave. Alone, she buries her mother, the only family she has ever known, and worries that when night falls, thieves will rob the grave. Even the dead cannot find peace here. Adelaida has a stable childhood in a prosperous Venezuela that accepted immigrants in search of a better life. But she lived with her single mother in a humble apartment. But now, every day, she lines up for bread that will inevitably sold out by the time she reaches the registers. Every night, she takes her window shut to, to shut out the tear gas raining down on, by, on protesters. When looters masquerading as revolutionaries take over her apartment, Adelaida must make a series of gruesome cho choices in order to survive. Um, I would like to, I'm intrigued to see where this goes, what, um, what direction it is. Interesting to see always what literature from a specific country is translated and published in the English speaking world. Those aren't all of the books from around the world that I want to read, um, but they are some of the ones that have been on my TBR um, and that I would like to try and get to this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Would you like a series of me reading books from countries um, that I haven't read from before? Um, and do you like to read books from various parts of the world? Let me know all that in the comments down below. If you're new here, my name is Roisin. I put out new videos twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. So I will see you again very soon. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. So I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.